guys are on Mr. Tastic and in this episode I'm going to be talking about some back to school art ideas. So let's dive in on this episode and let's make some art. So you can come up with different art themed community builders like make a masterpiece or some collaborative um, art projects. Just thinking about different ways to do some art themed community builders, maybe matching their names with like an art medium. Whatever it is, start off your year with some art themed community builders to get that no trust factor happening in your classroom because kids want to learn or people in general only will want to learn from people that they know and then because they know them, then they're going to trust them. So we want to create that no trust factor. Um, so doing that community building, um, creating that safe classroom space where they're feeling okay to be vulnerable and make art. Because sometimes art is vulnerable. Um, it feels vulnerable to me anyway. Um, and then we're going to share you, right? So we want to share you as well, right? It's not just a community building with the students, but like they need to get to know you because how can you expect them to know and respect and trust you if they don't get to know the real you? Now, I'm just not being share all of your life, hello, but you can take parts, little highlights, you know, things that you're okay with sharing and be like, hey, here's a very small glimpse into my life of who I am and you can get to know me. I like rubber duckies and jeeps. I like dogs. I have two kids named whatever, whatever, and they're in kindergarten and grade four. I don't know. I'm making this up. This is not true to me. Um, not true to me. And anyways, I have two cats would be true to me and I like making art. I like gardening and I love ducks and bird washing is all true to me and hiking. But that, but yeah, anyways, um, <laughs> what I'm saying is you can create that lens for them to get to know you and then they'd be like, oh wow, that's true to me too. We can have a connection. Why don't my teacher like dolphins? I like dolphins too. We have a connection. I know them and now I can trust them and now we can earn that respect. All right, so community building, but make it art themed. Next is to do a still life scavenger hunt. This is a great way to gauge where they're at, right? Like for where you're going to start teaching um, and see what skills they have before and, and yeah. You can see what skills they have before coming into your class and where they are right now, right? And, you know, because there's a little bit of loss of learning over the summer. So we're gonna see where they're at and then know where to start with your teaching, right? It's going to inform, you're gonna look and you're gonna formative assess to assess and you're gonna it's gonna help you understand where to teach right so you're not gonna do it too hard right we don't want to start off coming really hard with our teaching materials and be like oh my gosh they're gonna be like oh my gosh I had meltdown no confidence right so we don't want to do too hard we want to do a just right level maybe a little bit easier right the previous grade level <laughs> to build their confidence in those initial weeks, right? It's back to school. This is not like show what you know for the whole year. This is back to school. So we're going to keep it easy um, and build confidence as our focus for this. So I like to do still like scavenger hunt. It means that um, you can take a piece of paper and then depending on their age, you can either divide it in half with prompts or in quarters and then do double sided and then you can go be like okay I have to go find and draw a pencil on the floor oh my gosh or I have to go find and draw a paper airplane and then be like where am I gonna find a paper airplane oh wait you had hung one previously from the ceiling there it is hanging from the ceiling I gotta draw it like it's super silly obviously but kind of fun uh and then you can do a silly scavenger hunt um, they can draw, and then you can, that's going to tell you a lot by their drawing skills. Like what they draw for a stellar scavenger hunt is going to inform you of their drawing skills really quick. So if they know value, if they know form, if they can draw at all, it's going to let you know where they're at. Um, if they have any detail in it, like you're going to know quite a lot from this. And then it's going to tell you where to start, right? Or if you need to take back your expectations a little farther back and then start where you do not expect to start. All right, my question to you today in this video, and you're gonna answer in the comments of this video, is what questions do you have for the school year or for teaching art? Please let me know by uh, commenting in the, dis in the comment section of this video, and then I will respond to you personally. All right, number four is
artists to do self-portraits inspired by artists. So you can do uh, self-portraits inspired by the style of Picasso, or you can do self-portraits inspired by the style of Jean-Michel Basquiat. Two very different styles, one cubist and one neo-expressionist. You can teach about the artists and take a look at their different artworks. And then afterwards, you, they can, your students can create their own self-portraits in their style of art making. And how fun would that be? So there's a different twist on a self-portrait, right? We're learning about art history, but we're also making some self-portraits. And if you want to get really great, you can add some symbol symbols into their artworks or your students can add some symbols in there that represent who they are and their identity and their likes and interests. Woo! Yeah, take it up a notch. Um, now, if you're looking to, for some fully planned um, self-portraits inspired by Jean-Michel Basquiat or Pablo Picasso, you can find links to those in lessons fully planned, by the way, with all your assessments, step-by-steps, rubrics, everything handouts done, example done, in the description of this video, I will link to my resources there and you can check them out. Um, or you can plan it yourself and that's cool too. All right, next is to do back to school grid draws to build confidence. So I like to do grid drawings. Now for elementary primary, you could do the cartoon style ones where they're just practicing basic drawing skills um, and then make it themed for back to school. Or for your older grades, they can do more values, value photograph, black and white photographs, grid draws, right? Um, where they're practicing doing their values and their value scales and creating value to create, recreate an image. And then the photographs can be also back to school themed, right? Um, and then you can have them practice that and building their confidence and drawing skills. It's not super intense. It's low key. They can talk and you can put on some fun music while they're doing it and change the lighting. Um, and uh, like put some cafe jazz on or some mindful zen music and just make it really chill and fun. There's like no pressure like, oh, you need to make this exactly as it, it has to be perfect. No, just like make it chill and fun and they're practicing their skills and getting warmed up for the year. Meanwhile, you're floating around to the tables. You're also doing the same one. They can see that you're creating alongside them. Um, maybe you're chatting them up and getting to know your students, memorizing names, learning about their interests, and that will inform your teaching throughout the year, right? Because then you can base your lessons around student interests. And that'll be super fun and chill. And then I think that'd be a great way to start the year. Now, if you're looking for some back to school grid draws, both cartoons, and photo versions for your older students like middle school, high school. I'll link to my two resources in the description below the video. They are my original art, meaning that I drew the grid draws myself for the cartoons. And for the older ones, I took those photographs. It's all my own original everything. So make sure you check it out in the links below the description of the video. As well, don't forget the Artastic Collective is open and it's closing very soon. Um, so if you're wanting to get my full art curriculum, the Artastic Collective Art Curriculum membership is closing soon. So this is your last chance to join if you're looking to join this year. Please make sure you head on over to artasticcollective.com or hit the link for that in the description of this video. It's going to give you new art lessons every single month to help you plan your year. Fully planned art lessons for the elements of art, principles of design, holidays and seasons for your sketchbooks, for your ceramics and sculpture, for different themes and artists and art history. It also includes my art teacher growth course and exclusive um, members only community form. And you can find that hundreds of art lessons included all and, and this year's annual grand bundle also included and the previous ones also um will all be included and you can find the link to that in the description below the video or google artasticcollective.com or scan the qr code on the screen this is your last chance to join otherwise you'll have to wait until january to join so if you're looking for that a ton of art resources this is your moment to get on that and i will see you in that membership or i'm going to see you in the next episode which is how to plan art lessons and if you want to watch how to plan art lessons you can watch it by clicking the link above or in the description of the video please make sure you like and subscribe to this channel to help me grow this channel and allow me to continue to make these videos for you and i'll see you in the next episode